What's up guys, it's John here and in this video I'm going to be talking about seven of the best passive income ideas that I currently have and use and how you can start using them if you have an audience and even if you don't have an audience you can still start implementing some of these today. If that's something that sounds interesting to you don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to get notified every time I release a new video and don't forget to press that like button. If you're new here, my name is John and on this channel I talk about creating content sites, affiliate marketing, print on demand, Amazon FBA, as well as personal finance and a few other money related subjects. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about passive income ideas. Now, if you already have an audience, such as an Instagram following, a YouTube channel, a Facebook page, you, perhaps you have a blog or a content site, then some of these you'll be able to start implementing straight away and start earning passive income. It takes a little bit of work up front, nearly all of them do. It's, no, it's not some magic formula, but they are ways that do generate passive income once you've done the work up front. And if you don't have an audience, I'm also gonna be showing you some great examples on how you can get started, or how you can still create passive income with a bit of work up front, and so, so you can get yourself on the ladder of earning passive income. I will add that most of these ideas I'm about to tell you, I do use myself, and do have personal experience in, whether it's print on demand, whether it's creating content sites, whether it's to do with Facebook advertising. I, I actually have been doing this for over 15 years and it is, it is my day job, it is what I do. Now, I don't like to call it passive income because I prefer to see it as you creating a form of automated income. Now, with this in mind, what I actually mean is passive income is not something that you can just put a load of money into or you, know, you, you do something and then you, you earn money for the rest of your life. I, I just don't think, except for putting money into shares and things like that where the returns short term are relatively small i know you can have good returns over 20 30 40 years but that's more of a personal finance subject not what the subject of this video but to me with automated income it's where you you do the work now you create something of value whether it be a content site whether you build an audience on youtube whether you build an audience on instagram you solve a problem or you you show them a product which they can use which they love so most of these ideas, they either need you to put up quite a bit of work up front, unless you've already done that and you've already created your own audience with a bit Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, building content site or a blog. To me, the more you have to put in up front, the greater the rewards are down the line or the longer it will last. It seems to me that the more you do now, the more lucrative it becomes in the future or even the more passive it becomes. Now, the first one, a lot of you will have heard of and it's print on demand now for those who don't know what print on demand is print on demand is simply where you get everyday objects such as t-shirts water bottles hoodies backpacks mass if you've got this is a physical product which you can touch in general or wear you can usually be printed on as a print on demand product so i might get a t-shirt i might create my own design or have someone create that design for me i'll then put it on the t-shirt and then I could either promote it to my audience, which I've already had, so if I have a, a website or a blog or an Instagram following or Facebook, I can show them the designs, which I've either designed or had someone design, and then they can then buy that product, be it a t-shirt, a water bottle, a hat, a backpack. There's endless products out there where you can use print on demand. And basically, you, you put that design onto a product, you, you don't stock that product yourself, you upload it onto a platform. So to give you an idea, Teespring is a platform where you can upload your design onto products such as t-shirts, hoodies, masks, as well as other as well as other products. And then you send your audience to Teespring. They then buy your design, because you're using the Teespring as your platform. They then buy it. Teespring then print your design onto that t-shirt, send it to the customer. You can decide your own price. You might put $12, $15. So if you buy it for eight, and then you decide to put it out at $16, you then make the $8 profit. So basically, you send them to Teespring, they buy that t-shirt for $16, it costs you eight, and Teespring will then give you the $8 as profit. Now, there's a few ways of doing print on demand. The way I personally have done it in the past, actually I've done it two ways. I've done it through paid advertising. So when I did it, I did it through Facebook ads. When I, I had t-shirts created, for example, in the horse niche. So I had horse designs, 
drew up, not myself, I got someone who was a designer to design them. I then put them onto Teespring. I then used Facebook ads. I targeted Facebook pages that were obviously to do with horses. There were people who were members of them pages that were passionate about horse riding. I would then display the ad, targeting those horse pages, and then people would see the t-shirt, and oh, that's nice. And then they would share it with other people who they went horse riding with or who they knew. And then before you know it, you start to generate sales. Another way which, which I do it is, I actually run a small content publishing business, so I have quite a few websites within particular niches. So I can create a couple of t-shirts and hoodies within that particular niche. I can then upload them to Teespring. Another way where you can do this, sometimes a bit more profitable doing it this way, you can create a website. I've done this a couple of times, but it's a bit more work. You can create a website using a platform called Shopify, really easy to use. You can set up your own print on demand store. You connect it with a company such as Printful. So basically how it works there is, someone buys the product on your Shopify store. You then process the order. You can do it manually or you can set it up to do it automatically. So then they would go on to Shopify store, buy that shirt. You would process the order. It would be automatically in my case, sent to Printful. They will then print the t-shirt, charge you what it costs to print that t-shirt. So that's how print on demand works. Now, if you don't want to go down the paid route, or you haven't already got an audience, is I would use a website called Redbubble. Now, Redbubble I haven't used, but I do know a couple of people who do use Redbubble because of how passive it can be. So you do the same, you get your designs drawn up, you can either have someone do them or you can design them yourself. Then you upload them to Redbubble. And because Redbubble is a marketplace that's, that has already got lots of customers, going to the website looking for unique designs to do within a particular niche, then they would see your design, they would buy that t-shirt from Redbubble, they would send it out, and then you would earn your cut depending on what you sold the product for. Now, when it comes to designs, you can, there's a few ways. If you're an artist, or you're good at design, then you may use Photoshop, then you may put the design together yourself. But if like me, a basic design skill, so I can open up Photoshop and put some stuff together, but my design skills are they're non-existent really, I can do the basics. I can do, but for t-shirt design, you can go onto a site like Fiverr, that's where I go. I go onto Fiverr, I get the designs. I can look up t-shirt designers on Fiverr. There's literally hundreds of them. You can look at previous designs which they put together. They'll have a portfolio showing off their work. And then you can go to that design. You can give them some ideas. You might show them a similar shirt which you want creating. As, a, as an idea. Uh, one thing I will say about t-shirt designers, do not copy other designs, that's a big no-no. When I look at t-shirt designers and send them to the designers, I, I'm, I'm using it more as inspiration or to get ideas, not to completely copy that design. Like I said, you, you wanna come up with something that's unique that people haven't really seen before. Sometimes you can take slogans that are on other shirts and put them on. Uh, I don't see a problem with that, depending on what the slogan is. Obviously, if it's a copyrighted slogan, you cannot do that. Go to Fiverr, I would say, this is what I want. They would charge me $5, $10, depending on the price. It varies if you just want the front printing, if you want the front and back printing, that'd be a bit more. If you want a more detailed design, it would be a bit more. If you go to Fiverr, have a look through the designs, have a look through the different designers. You get an idea of which one you might want to use. Then you, you can speak to them and you, know, you can send them examples of what you want. You do that, they then might come back to you within 24 hours or a few days. They come at design, you say, is that good? They say, yeah. You may want to put a few little changes to it and they'll happily do that. Then you get that design and you put it on your shirt, whether you're putting it onto Redbubble, where they've already got an audience, or whether you created your own store with Shopify and you want to put it on a t-shirt on there, or you want to go down the Teespring route where they also have an audience, but you can also send your customers there as well. In terms of getting customers with paid advertising, at the moment, I think using Instagram is very good. I think if you find an Instagram influencer, or if you go to Facebook and find really niche down Facebook pages with a fairly large audience, if you've already got an audience, because you've got a blog or a website with a loyal following, and it's quite a niche blog, so if you've got a blog on DIY, you may have, I don't know, different quotes to do with, with DIY. So that's what I would do. Personally, at the moment, what I do is I have my own content sites, as I've mentioned. I have the designs on Teespring, and I promote them with my own banners on my own websites. 
to me that's the, that's the easiest way because to me it's just an extra bit of passive income so the easiest way to do that is to have designs drawn up within my niches and promote them designs on my own site i highly recommend that you try print on demand like i've just mentioned a few few ideas there where you can do it with an audience you can do it if you've got no audience there's paid ways of doing it there's ways if you've got no money to do it you can do the designs yourself you can get someone to do the designs so there really is ways to get into print on demand and I would highly recommend that you try that one. So passive income idea number two is to sell digital products. Now by digital products, I mean things like PDF files, you might sell downloadable music, downloadable photos, footage, designs, you might sell spreadsheets. Now there's two, there's two platforms where I recommend selling digital downloads. We'll get into what you can actually sell in a minute to give you a few examples. But one of them is uh, Selfie. Now Selfie is a platform where you can create your own digital product, put it onto Selfie, and then you can have your own shop on Selfie. So then you can link your digital product to the Selfie platform. So if people, if you've already got an audience, for example, and you've got a, you've got a digital product, you can send them to your self i store and then they can download the product they take a small transaction fee the other way you can do it is you could sell on somewhere like etsy now etsy is it's a great platform and, it, and it, over recent years it has really grown but the thing i like about etsy is if you've got a digital download product you want to make but you don't have an audience to promote it to then with etsy you can create your digital product you can upload it to etsy create your own etsy store and then you can start selling that product pretty much straight away. Now, with Etsy, we've been a platform where people are going, like eBay, to look for products. You don't need your own audience because people are already going to Etsy to find products that you've made. For example, if you wanted to do a digital product, say a thank you card for weddings, so after a wedding you might send out a thank you card for coming. Now, you could go to Etsy, and you might go to Etsy looking for thank you cards that you can download and print yourself and then send up to everyone who came to your wedding. So I could have a thank you card created as like an editable PDF file, upload it to Etsy, people go onto Etsy looking for thank you cards for weddings and then your product comes up. They like your design because you've got a lot of examples of them, you download them and then you've just got the, the, the fee to Etsy and it's a great way of getting started if you've got no audience. Now, if you've already got an audience, so let's say you've got a blog or large following on Instagram, you've got a Facebook page, you're a YouTube creator, anything like that where you've already got an audience and you can create a digital product which they may buy. So a couple of examples here. You had a blog or a YouTube channel and it was all about backpacking and going traveling, then you, you might create a downloadable product that someone can download and it's a list and categories of everything they will need that they can tick off. Another example, maybe something like if you had a gardening site, or you might have a, a general gardening calendar, you could do like a veg planting guide, and then you could sell that as a file, and you could include that with a calendar. You could, a few files that go together to do with vegetable gardening that someone might use, so they can make sure that they're planting stuff at the right time, that they're taking out the ground at the right time, that they're feeding at the right time. Then you can send them to buy the downloadable products. With that in mind, uh, what, what I would be tempted to do is, if I had a blog for instance, I would set up my store on Sellify because they deal with all the payment process. You just need to upload the file onto the store and then I would link to the Sellify store and then they can go to the Sellify store through my link which I might promote underneath my YouTube video or on my blog in a banner or at the end of every blog post they could buy that, that, that uh, downloadable product. Now, it's a great way of creating income by doing the work once, uploading it to a platform, and then if you've already got the audience and you consistently promote this product to the audience, I wouldn't like go mad promoting it heavily, but like I always have it on the, on the sidelines or at the bottom or as a banner, so something like that. And then you can create a downloadable product and you can continue selling it and selling it and selling it. So a couple of other ideas of uh, digital products is let's say you're a good designer you could do designs that people can use for say t-shirts we we're talking about print on demand before selling your own t-shirts but perhaps you could be a designer that sells a photoshop template of a t-shirt where someone can buy that template 
who's got basic Photoshop skills, and then they can move it about, they can change the text, they can change the image, or you might sell a downloadable product for Canva, which is a lot easier to use in Photoshop, where they can do the same with that, they can change the images, they can change the text, and they can put it on their own t-shirts. If you're a good designer, then you could also design uh, in Photoshop, and again in Canva, you could design templates for, say, the top of Facebook headers, or if, if someone's looking for a template for Pinterest, so that they can put their own image on and their own text, and you might sell a template for this, you, you might sell like 50 templates to get you started on uh, Pinterest. If you're into, say, the DIY niche, of a DIY channel where you're showing people how to make a bridge, but to make things easier for them so they've not just got the video, you could download an affordable PDF file, something like that, with the materials list and how to put the items together step by step. It's a great way of adding extra income to something like a YouTube channel or a blog using instructions and materials. Now, downloadable products is better if you already have an audience, so if you have an Instagram audience or you have a YouTube channel or you have a blog or you have a content site, it's a lot easier because obviously you've already got the audience. Now, just to sum up uh, selling digital products, if you already have an audience, then I would recommend you use Selfie. Selfie is a great way, you can get set up in like five minutes. It even has a 14 day trial. I think Selfie costs around $20 a month. So then you can upload your digital products. You can have your store on Selfie, or you can use the Selfie platform and have your own domain. So www.johnsdiy.com obviously you'd have to buy a domain to do that, but have a website, you can put your downloadable products on your own website and you can just use uh, Selfie buy now buttons, you can put buy now buttons on your own site. So you can also put your digital products onto Etsy. They already have an audience, so obviously if you don't have an audience, it's a great way to try and sell downloadable products because people are going to Etsy to look for these downloadable products. But even if you have them on Etsy and you also have an audience, it's nothing to stop you sending them to the product page on Etsy for your uh, downloadable product. So now, passive income idea number three is affiliate marketing, but we're gonna go down the route here of affiliate marketing promoting software products. The reason being is affiliate marketing can be used to sell physical products and quite often to sell digital products, but the commissions on digital products are usually quite high. Sometimes it's as much as as 100% of their first payment, or if it's a software that's uh, a reoccurring payment, like Netflix is a reoccurring payment, or some software platforms, like uh, VPNs, things like that, they can be reoccurring, so you can earn money every month. So if they give a 50% commission on a particular software, and it's, but it's £100 a month, then you would get a reoccurring revenue of £50 every single month. Sometimes they will give you an upfront payment, which is equal or more to how much that customer actually pays for that software for that month, and then they give you a smaller reoccurring payment. Some software, they just give you a flat fee up front. But to give you a couple of examples, so for example, for my uh, business, I, I use a software called SEM Rush. Now, SEM Rush is, it's a keyword software really, but you can track your rankings if you own a blog or a website, and you can come up with niche ideas, so it'll tell you roughly if for a certain phrase or keyword, what the search volume is on Google, but that's what this video is about. But for the purposes of this video, for example, I use that SEM Rush software. So I might do a blog post or I might do a YouTube channel, how I do my keyword research. And in that video, I might show you how I personally do it. So I use this software that's called SEM Rush. It gives me a rough idea of what the search volume is. It also shows me related search queries on Google that are often searched search to, which I can include in my content. But what's good about this is, I can say, if you want to also do keyword research in the way I do it, then I recommend you get SEM Rush. There's a link in the description, although you've got to state that it is an affiliate link and you will earn a small commission from it, but you can promote that. They click on that link, and then if they purchased SEM Rush, then they would give me a $200 commission just for that customer for signing up to SEM Rush with my affiliate link. Now SEM Rush also do a trial, so even if they just sign up for the free trial to try it out, then SEM Rush still pay a $10 commission. But if they then go on to sign up fully, or if they signed up to the full subscription of SEM Rush straight straight away, then straight away I would get that $200 commission. Another quick quick one which I use, for instance, I use Shutterstock for my images. 
on my content sites. Now, Shutterstock, if I was to do a video on how I get my images, say on YouTube or on a blog, then I could then say, well, I use Shutterstock to do my images. This is how I use Shutterstock. I use their platform to edit the images as well. It's got a massive library of images. I'm never sure of images I use. I find it affordable. And I could say again, if anyone wants to have a look at Shutterstock, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. Shutterstock pay 20% of the first payment up to $300. So uh, another one I use is by using uh, a VPS service. Now, and they, they actually pay you 100% commission of what the customer pays plus on, on a recurring schedule, so it's so much a month, they will then pay you 40% of the payment, of the monthly payment. So I can't think what it's off the top of my head, but say someone paid £10 a month for the uh, VPN, I think it's less than that, but for the purpose of this video, say it was 10%, then every month they would pay £10, but I would get paid £4 off the VPN network every single month, referring that customer to them. Now, uh, what I like about promoting software products is if someone finds a software product that they're happy with and they use and it offers value, they are very unlikely to switch to a new software or to get rid of the software. If I wanted to promote SEM Rush for keyword research, I, for example, would do a video on a, how I do my keyword research or, or how I find phrases and keywords to use within my blog. Because these are all searches that people would do on YouTube who they might not have SEM Rush. They might be looking on, on how to do it. They might not even be aware that SEM Rush even exists. So I would go down the route of showing people how to do a specific task, but without saying how to do a specific task on SEM Rush, it'd be. So then I would then introduce them to SEM Rush, and then they may say, this, this looks like it could be something for me. They go, they do the, they do the trial. I get a $10, $10 commission because they signed up for the trial. They then keep the trial 14 days and think, yeah, this is for me, this. They then go and carry on with the subscription, at however it is a month, and then SN Rush say, right, that person's signed up after the trial, so I'm going to give John uh, the referral commission of uh, $200 for referring that new customer to us. So then I've actually earned $210 for referring that customer. Now, passive income idea number four is to start a YouTube channel. Now, I'm no expert at YouTube channels, in fact, this is the only YouTube channel I have. And the reason I've created this YouTube channel is I've been working online for 15 years and decided I'm, I'm going to share how I make a living online. Obviously, I hope this channel in time will earn revenue from affiliate commissions and from ads, perhaps my own product. So yeah, so if you have a passion on a particular subject, then you may decide to start a YouTube channel. You can start a YouTube channel on nearly, en on nearly any subject. Now, my YouTube channel is about making money online because that's what I've done for the last 15 years. With YouTube channels, there's a lot of speculation how much people earn. Now, if you earn money from the ads, this can vary depending on what niche you're in. So if you're in the general blogging niche where you're blogging your life, them sort of things are entertainment. Now, the revenue can be quite low. So per thousand views, known as RPM, that's what they call it, then you, they might only earn a couple of dollars, even one dollar per thousand views. Whereas someone who's talking about making money online or is talking about how to create a business or is talking about personal finance, then the RPMs for them can be as high as 40 to 50 dollars for every thousand views. And then you've got the people in the middle who might earn 15 to 20, 25 dollars per thousand views. They might be channels such as tutorials, tech channels, and things like that. So that's one thing to bear in mind if you're starting a YouTube channel. However, YouTube ads is not the only way to earn revenue for a YouTube channel. You can, of course, use affiliate marketing, which we've already talked about, where you can promote product. You can, of course, use uh, print on demand, which we also talked about. So if you've got an audience on YouTube, then you can promote your print on demand products. You might promote t-shirts, as I've talked about, hats, backpacks, water bottles. Now, the trick with YouTube is, is you need to try and create videos that are not a trend. So you, you want to create videos that are going to be relevant two to three years down the line. So you create a video now, and then it will earn money then passively, which is what this old video is meant to be about. You'll earn money passively from that video for the next two to three years, sometimes even longer, maybe five, six years. So 
Starting a YouTube channel is a great way to get started. Now, I'd recommend that you start with something that you're passionate about, that you're really interested in. If you try to go for a subject with a high RPM, then you'll quickly burn out, you'll, you'll get discouraged, you won't be interested in it. So I, I really cannot stress that I personally think that you need to go down a route that you're passionate about. If you don't want to do a channel about DIY, then don't think of the ads, like if the rates, the, rate, the rates for ads on DIY might not actually be, be that bad, but even if they weren't great, you've still got the option to sell print on demand t-shirts, you can still sell affiliate products, you can still recommend products, physical products, you can perhaps create a course, and you know, so there is different ways once you build a YouTube channel and a loyal audience and a following to actually monetize. That, that audience so even if the audience or the particular niche on YouTube is one that is known to not pay particularly well for ads don't let that put you off because there's a lot of other ways to make money on YouTube than just creating ads now if you're thinking about how I'm gonna get started I've not got a camera I've not got a tripod I've not got, got the software I'll just give you an idea of what of what I actually do these videos on so I I've got an iPhone 11 so this video right now is being created on an iPhone 11 a tripod which I got off my friend who had a spare tripod said you can borrow this or you can have this so I've got the tripod off him I already had a Mac for my business work so in terms of editing I use iMover to edit the, the uh, videos which I produce so that comes free with a Mac also, I know that you can also edit videos on your phone for thumbnails I use a free app on my phone to create the thumbnails for these videos so as you can see I have not particularly bought anything to do these YouTube channels I already had the phone I've got the tripod off a friend you may have to buy a tripod but tripods are relatively affordable I have my Mac which already has editing software on it the only thing I did buy was a Pell mic I think it was about $20 so only a small upfront cost there so to get started on YouTube that is literally what I have done if you're looking for a way of trying to build an audience and uh, you're not worried about being on camera then I highly recommend you you start a YouTube channel but passive income idea number five is selling courses now I'm not talking about the make money online courses here where I'll teach you how to do this for fifteen hundred dollars and stuff like that no I'm not on about any of that what I'm talking about is if you have experience in a particular space so you might have experience in pottery you might have experience in advertising you might have experience in using Photoshop you might have experience in some type of skill something that can be teached and what people actually want to learn then this can be a good way of earning passive income once you've done the work up front so with courses I'd recommend you use uh, Teachable so Teachable is a software where you can film create your course upload it to Teachable then if you already have an audience of some sort that you want to promote you can then send them to your course on Teachable if you don't already have an audience which is which, which is what's good about this bit now is that because Teachable is a platform with courses on they've already got an audience of people going to Teachable looking on how looking at how to do particular tasks so for me for instance say I wanted to learn how to use Photoshop more in depth then I would probably go to Teachable to look for a course that's only like $20 teach me on a specific type of process that I can use with Photoshop but there is literally hundreds and hundreds of different niches in which you can do courses on now it's all about taking knowledge you've got and learn over the years so this is great for people who are perhaps a little bit older who've got a lot of experience at doing a particular task and can teach that rather than trying to teach it one-on-one -on -one to someone you can teach it to hundreds of people literally at the same time so one of the best ways to do this is to create the course the best way to do it is a video course you would then upload it to teachable and like I said if you already got an audience you can then send them to teachable to watch your course or if you don't have an audience then teachable it already has a large audience already tasked on to learn how to do new things so it's a good way of creating a course whether you've got an audience or whether you've not if you've got an audience it's obviously a little bit better because you can then direct your audience to your course on teachable so create courses that go into detail on how to do a particular task that you can charge like $15, $20 for perhaps even $100 if it's something that's that's quite detailed and quite specific and 
warrants warrants say hundred dollar payment then by all means go all out the thing with courses is you can learn nearly everything you want on youtube but with a course it puts it all into step-by-step -step instructions on how to do a particular task and it stops you watching video after video after video and getting different ways of doing things you can just learn the one way which somebody uses and is teaching you to do it so in terms of courses i think it's a great way of making money if you do have a particular skill that can be taught through video then i definitely recommend that you think about creating a course passive income idea number six is do some amazon affiliate marketing now with the amazon affiliate program which is really called the amazon associates program it's where you can promote products that are for sale on amazon and for referring a customer to amazon to buy that product amazon will then pay you a small commission now the fees that amazon pay are between one and about 11 percent at the highest so some products entertainment cameras they might only pay like a three percent whereas products in the diy kitchen home they may pay around seven percent whereas products in the clothing shoes fashion they tend to pay around 11 percent now with the amazon associates network it's the easiest to get started with but it's probably the hardest to make a decent amount of money with and the reason for that is that in general as i've just explained the commissions are relatively small depending on the niche and the most commissions you can earn with the amazon associates program even with clothing and shoes products like that is 11 percent 10 percent even so 11 percent compared to say promoting a digital product where they might give you 100 percent of that first payment or on a reoccurring commission structure they might give you say 30 percent of how much that customer pays for their product or service every single month the commissions are relatively small but the good thing about the amazon associates program is it's a good place to get started now if you have content sites blog a youtube channel things like that perhaps an instagram following then you can promote products that you use that you purchase from amazon if you use say a certain kitchen product or garden tool or perhaps you're in the diy and you use a particular drill or drill bits then the ones you use you might actually recommend to your audience who is watching you so then you could get a link from amazon which is really easy to do you can literally go to the product page you can get something called the site stripe which is which is a, an add-on from amazon that goes into the chrome browser so if i went to a particular page a particular product on amazon i then click the button and it give me a link i can then paste that link anywhere so if i'm a youtuber i might paste it in the description if i've got a blog i might put it within my blog if i've got a pin if i've got a pin interest following or if I've got an Instagram following, then I can post it on Instagram and tell people, click on this link, you can buy this product here. Again, because it's an affiliate program, you've, you've got to say that it's an affiliate link and you may earn a commission from people who buy through your links. But overall, it's not a bad place to start the Amazon Associates program. And to be honest, I've made most of my money from the Amazon Associates program. I've made like uh, six figures out of the Amazon Associates program. And and the way i do it is i actually create content sites which i'll talk about in in my final way of making money passively another good way to start with the amazon associates program is they actually do something else it's called the bounty program and what the bounty program is is things like amazon prime amazon music and the audio books then you can promote those services that amazon provides and they will give you a flat commission so for example i'm based in the uk so if i was to promote amazon prime and someone signed up to the program then amazon would pay me three pounds if i promoted say the uh amazon music then they pay about four pound fifty in uk money so in dollars what's that about five fifty six six dollars something like that for every person who i get to to sign up in in the uk uh Amazon have got something called Amazon Business. It's where people with businesses, they sign up to Amazon Business and then they can buy things off Amazon. Sometimes they get discounted prices, I believe. And they also can pay on like a 30 day net term. If I had a channel say on business and I promoted Amazon Business account, then Amazon actually pay 25 pounds for every customer who signs up to that program who I send through my link. 
So £25 in US dollars, what's that? About $30 they would pay. So you can see how, depending on what your, say your YouTube channel's about or your blog's about, how, how it can be lucrative. And if you have a channel or an Instagram following and you want to promote something that's quite broad because your audience is quite broad and not as niche down as if, say, you had a gardening blog, it's, it's more of an entertainment blog or it's about your life, then you might promote things like Amazon Prime and Amazon Video because it would appeal to a broader of your audience. Um, it's a good way to get started. It's The only thing is, like I said, it is difficult to earn a lot of money from it. But if you can create a website, which, which is what my publishing business focuses on, then if you can get a lot of traffic to a website that's within a particular niche, then you can recommend products that you use or that you like, you do a lot of research, you say, I, I, I put my name, these products are the ones which I would recommend. And it's a great way to get started with the Amazon Associates program. And like I said, if you've got a YouTube channel or social media following, it's also a good way to, you just gotta put these links in, you just gotta mention it, and you know you can start creating some passive income from an audience that you've already got. Now, passive income idea number seven is something that I'm really passionate about, is to create content sites. Now content sites, maybe I might have a content site in the DIY space. I would create topics around the DIY space. I would then start to add uh, articles over the course of 12 months. So this is quite a long, a long game. You can create a website about something you're passionate about. And I definitely recommend you do it on something that you know about, knowledge about, you are passionate about, because it takes a long time to build a content site up can take as long as 12 months, but once you've got traffic coming and you can get traffic free from Google, there's a lot of ways in which you can monetize a content site, sometimes called the niche site or an authority site, sometimes that's what they're known as, but you can create some really good content, get ranking in Google search, so people might search how to make a garden bridge. You'll come up at the top of Google or someone might search how do I lay paving slabs? And you might do a tutorial on how to do paving slabs. Or you might even do review type topics. You might say, best lawnmower for cutting long grass. Or best professional lawnmower. The, the topics could be uh, endless, depending on what your niche is. But you create a content site, like I said, takes at least 12 months. But to me, it's one of the best ways to create passive income. But it takes the most amount of work up front and to be honest, you can do the work and then after 12 months, you, you can maybe just keep that site updated. You might update all content now and again. You might just add one or two articles a month to these sites or you might choose to build this site into a very large content site where you've got literally thousands of articles and you might contribute three to five articles a week to that site. You may write them yourself if you're good at writing. When I started out, I wrote every single article myself. I think I got to over 100 articles, but then after that, I had some good revenue coming in, and then I decided to see if I could find freelance writers who were knowledgeable on the topics which I am which I am involved with, and I went to Upwork, which is which is a platform where you freelance writers can work with people who need to use freelance writers. So I have people now who write the articles for me. I do quite a lot of the editing and the formatting of the articles, but again, you could get someone who will format the articles for you, who would add the images, who would add like the links. So once you created a content site and it's like, well now I've got a content site, I've got 100,000 visitors a month coming in, then how do you monetize this traffic, John? Well, all them last passive income ideas that I've just been talking about, this is where they all come in and can, can all be used to one, diversify the revenue with different revenue streams, but you can also take advantage of the audience. For example, if you do a content site, one of the ways in which you can make money will be to put display ads on. So display ads are these ads that you see on the internet, which is free. There's networks like Ezoic, Mediavine. They usually pay a premium compared to using just AdSense. I personally use Mediavine on my larger sites. Some smaller ones I use is Zoic. I also implement affiliate marketing. So as I was talking about earlier, I've actually done product reviews. So I do use the Amazon Affiliates program. I'll, put a, I'll try and put a screenshot up on the screen 
where I, I do show I, I earn a considerable amount of money from the Amazon Affiliates program. Other ways you can make money is, depending on what your site is, you might be able to develop a course. If you had a site that was more on tutorials, marketing for example, you might do courses on how you do Facebook marketing, how you set up an AdWords account, stuff like that. Other ways of which you can make money is, again, affiliate marketing, but you don't have to promote Amazon. There's most brands out there, big brands that you'll know for products you use, most of them have some sort of an affiliate program where if you send them directly, to their website to buy the product directly from them instead of buying it say through Amazon then they will often pay you a bigger commission than the Amazon will pay you so basically every every other type of way of making passive income which I've already mentioned you can usually implement nearly all of them if you just build content site like I said I'm a bit biased because that's what I focus on YouTube the same if you build a bigger audience on YouTube then you can promote obviously you can promote the Amazon affiliate products but I find that with a content site it's, the reason it's a lot more passive is because on YouTube, I think you've got to have some sort of, you, you, you might post a video once a week or once every couple of weeks or a couple of times a week, whereas with a content site, you can build a content site up, you can have 100 articles on there, you can be earning relatively good money, you can, you can post once a week. Sometimes people might go and not post on a content site. For I've got a couple of smaller content sites where I only actually update them sites a couple of times a year. Whereas with YouTube, and if you have if you have a Instagram, Instagram, Instagram following, Facebook, things like that, it's really you've got to, you've got to keep putting content on there. But I find with content sites, if you can rank them in Google and start answering queries people are asking on Google writing articles about them or getting a writer to write about them and it's one of the best ways to generate passive income and personally that's how I earn the majority of my money is through building content sites that are around a particular subject or niche and then I implement all these different types of making money online which I've just mentioned into these websites with the Amazon Associates sites being a really good way of doing it by using the Amazon Associates program like I said near a Christmas I find it works well at Christmas is if you set up a print on demand shop where you might sell t-shirts, hoodies, packs within a particular niche because people are looking at them needs at Christmas, they're looking for gift ideas, they might say oh I'll get a t-shirt for, for a, a little Johnny who, who's into his uh, woodwork at the moment or we'll get a t-shirt for Grant, she really, oh, she really loves gardening and she, she'd love them quotes on, on them t-shirts for gardening and you can see how you can implement all these different ways of making money into just building one one content site one large content site and that can be enough for a lot of people to even make it their full-time job their full-time living like i said i've been doing it now for a, a long time my biggest content site i've been doing for about five years my my favorite way of making passive income is by building an audience through building a content site and then using all the passive income ideas I've mentioned throughout this video to implement them onto the content site to generate these different revenue streams. So if you've enjoyed this video and you've not already and you've not already done so, if you could give the video a like and if you could if you've got any questions, don't forget you can comment below and I'll try and get back to the questions about any of the subjects I mentioned in this video. Don't don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you found this interesting, want to see more videos, and don't forget to click that bell to get notified every time I release a new video. And I think I've already mentioned it, but don't forget to smash that like button if you found this video useful. That's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I, thought, and I hope you found it useful. I'll see you in the next video.